Hello and welcome to the War Room, where I take a look at an upcoming multiplayer game and talk about the things that I think are interesting and what's likely to happen and why I think so. Now I don't have a lot of time to edit this one, but I'll say right now it's approximately six hours before the start of the next session, and Grand Columbia and the United Kingdom are so far the only nations in the game right now that have a formalized treaty on the forums. They have an offensive and defensive alliance, and honestly it makes no sense to me at all. I mean, Colombia has done everything possible to screw over the UK, whether accidentally or not, I don't know. But uh, basically, there's no reason for this. There's no reason for this alliance to exist, especially since the UK can no longer get the Panama Canal. But that's the one treaty that's been signed. Uh, as you can see, I'm currently in a state of war, and this video has not yet been uploaded. But basically, I was in a defensive alliance with Grand Colombia, and Brazil declared war on Grand Colombia to release Venezuela. Russia joined on behalf of Brazil, and I joined on behalf of Grand Colombia, which means Russia and I are now at war. But Russia and I had a non-aggression pact, which basically means we're not going to attack each other. So we've got this front, and of course the AI is moving around, but basically we've got a stationary front. I can't take anything off him, he can't take anything off me because we had a non-aggression pact last session. And even if they wanted to, they couldn't because this release of Venezuela costs 100% war scores. So at worst, we would release Venezuela. And at best, nothing happens because I'm not actually going to fight this war because it's stupid. Um, but let's look at what's likely to happen. So Venezuela has cores over, obviously, Venezuela. Unfortunately, these two provinces that Grand Colombia bought off of the Netherlands also belong to Venezuela, even though they're not Venezuelan cores. So Venezuela is released. It takes all of core Venezuela plus those two provinces, which means that Grand Colombia can't do a restore order on it. But it can immediately truce break and take back two-thirds of its land. Two-thirds of Venezuela. So that's not a huge problem. It just means that it would take a little bit of infamy to get back the last of those cores. Kind of sucks, but, you know, it's not the end of the world. The best thing, though, is that Russia was not the one that declared the war. That means that when Venezuela is released, it doesn't become part of Russia's sphere. So Russia can't immediately defend it. So basically, if Grand Colombia surrenders, the day after they surrender, or even the day they surrender they should immediately declare war on Venezuela and try and take their land back. I've actually talked with Russia about this, and he doesn't even have a problem with it. He just wants Venezuela to be released. And this stems from another thing, is that Russia and I can't be at war because we've got some plans. Now, I just said that there's only been a single treaty signed on the forums, and that's because on the one hand, some of us want our treaties to be a secret for now, and on the other hand, there's a possibility that just like two sessions ago, that everyone else in the world might decide to form some giant coalition against Germany again. So that's a possibility. And, you know, some people say I'm paranoid in this game, but, you know, there's a saying, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean people aren't trying to kill you. And uh, I don't think that's going to happen, but I will say it's a possibility. The thing that's more likely to happen, though, is the plan I've been discussing with Russia for the past two sessions might actually come to fruition, finally. At the end of last session, I ended up with Baluchistan. Now, this was sort of a negotiated deal with Russia. Basically, I declared war on Persia. Persia is in Russia's sphere. Russia joined the war, and they just gave me Baluchistan. Now, the idea here is that there's a Western front against the UK. There hasn't really been a reliable Persian player, otherwise this wouldn't have been necessary, but because Persia's been in AI so much, we basically needed to make sure that there was some land here that we could invade from. And I guess I just gave it away. Russia and I were planning to invade the UK and release India. Now Japan and Russia are also allied, and as you can see here, Japan's got some land in the east. I also have some land here in the east. So basically we've got some basically we've got two fronts that we can invade from. Japan can pile its troops in Siam and Laos. There are two provinces here that can be accessed in the east. Three if this region of Siam is acquired and given to either Japan or me. I assume I would be taking it, but honestly it doesn't matter. Um, basically there'd be three provinces here that could be attacked. And in the west. Baluchistan has access to four provinces within the UK. And there's a single province up here, Kashgar, which can access Gilgit in the Kashmir region. So this one crossing right here is not blocked by the Himalayas, but everything else along this border essentially is. And uh, there's no real benefit in taking eastern Afghanistan because this province can be accessed from Baluchistan, and this province uh, can't be accessed from Afghanistan, so that wouldn't help anyway. Basically, we've got uh, one, two, five provinces in the west that can be attacked into, and two provinces in the east. 
just to be clear, there is a rule against attacking from neutral territory, so Russia can't come through Persia and attack the UK. But Russia can go through Persia, come to Germany, and then attack the UK. Now, the UK has been so worried about Germany that they've left their back door wide open. There's hardly any troops in India compared to how many troops there should be in India. The UK has the vast majority of its forces in the British Isles. 301 brigades total, a tiny fraction of that is in India. And honestly, there's just not enough to hold. I mean, if there's a single point that's broken through, India is lost. At that point, the UK has to try and ship troops back and basically, you know, divert and do something else because there's simply not enough here to hold it. So I think this should be a fairly easy win. And assuming it actually happens, uh, I think that'd be really great because I, I remember I counted at some point. I, I looked earlier in the day and I didn't write it down, but there's a huge amount of pop in India. And I don't remember if it's like 20 million or 30 million, but it's somewhere in that range. There's a giant proportion of the UK's pop is in India. And obviously them losing that benefits me indirectly. And I would not be the one declaring the war because I don't personally want to be allied with everyone and be responsible for it, but I also want to spend my infamy elsewhere. So an independent India, obviously that would be in Russia's sphere, but basically the second they westernize, they're going to become a great power, so it doesn't even matter. Now, there is a possibility that this has all just been a giant ruse and that Russia's going to instead backstab me and fuck me over, but the fact that I was given Baluchistan makes me think that that's not the case. All right, so that's the first thing. And uh, also things to consider, if Russia, Japan, and I go to war with the UK, uh, who's going to join the UK? So it's very likely that France is going to join the UK. Assuming the Netherlands stays neutral, I only have to defend a three-province front with France, not including any naval invasions. So basically, if they naval invade uh, either me or Russia, then I'll be you know moving stacks around to deal with that. But basically, all I have to do is hold three provinces here. If the Netherlands joins on our side, honestly they shouldn't because that would just hurt us in the long run, but there's a possibility Netherlands might join against us and that would be a giant problem, but even so I think the tickers off of India would be enough for us to win even if I end up losing, you know, even if half my country's occupied, we'd still win the war, um, and I think that would be worth it in the long run. Italy's main priority right now is getting back its cores because it popped the decision and now has cores over a good chunk of Austria here. You know, Istria, Venetia, uh, South Tyrol. And uh, it's, it's a priority for him at this point to get that land back, which means anything Italy can do to fuck over Austria-Hungary, Italy is going to do. So Austria-Hungary, I think, is not going to join the war because if they did, Italy would join against us and that would be more of a problem than Austria helping us. Um, so it really wouldn't be worth it, but, you know, is there some possibility of Italy joining the UK against us? Sure. Uh, if they did, that would be a bit of a problem, but, you know, if they did that, then it's likely Austria would join to counteract that. So, you know, Italy might remain neutral, they might join against us. Spain, I don't know where they would go. Uh, honestly, they could go either way. But this is the kind of war that, you know, decides games, so it's likely that anyone who can hop in is going to hop in on some side if there's some benefit. We're also getting close to the point where great wars are going to be discovered. Uh, this might be a great war, and if it is a great war, then you know people stand to lose a whole lot depending on which side they come down on. The USA might go either way for reasons I'll talk about in just a moment, but um, I think this is a pretty solid plan, and I think we're going to win if this actually happens. Now the thing that sort of upsets this whole plan is that I was messaged during the week by the USA. The USA had a completely different plan out of the blue, and it goes something like this. The USA thinks that Japan is too powerful, and he wants to release land from Japan. He wants an independent Korea. He wants an independent Manchuria. He wants to kick Japan entirely out of Africa, including these lands that are currently being contested between Japan and Scandinavia. Essentially, all the Scandinavian claims would, in theory, go back to Scandinavia. Italy would get its claims back, and, you know, Scandinavia is on board with this. I'm on board with this. Uh, the problem is, we kind of need Japan to fight the UK. And uh, also, the USA wants me to take the Japanese lands in Indochina, which means I would be at war with Japan. So, you know, I can't be at war against Japan while simultaneously being in a war with Japan against the UK. The game just doesn't quite work that way. Also, according to House Rules, you're not allowed to declare war on someone who's already at war. So basically, if Russia declares the war against the UK, and assuming this war drags on for a really long time, it means the USA can't declare war on Japan anyway. 
and vice versa. If the USA declares war on Japan, and then if I join in support of the USA, it means that no one else can declare a separate war on me, according to the House rules. Uh, but it does mean that anyone else could pile into that war on whichever side they wanted. Now, Russia has been allied with Japan essentially the entire game, so it means that if the USA declares war on Japan, Russia's probably going to join their side. And if I'm at war with Japan, that means Russia's going to send all of its troops at me. Now, there's a lot of other people in Europe who might also join either side. The UK has been against me the entire game, but he's been helping the USA, so is he going to go against me, or is he going to go with the USA? And, you know, it's kind of a wild card there. Personally, I think he'd probably go against me, uh, just because that's sort of the way he's been playing things. Austria obviously would be supporting me, but then we'd have Italy to deal with, because Italy would definitely join on the other side. France would definitely join on the other side too because they want to take land from me. And then Spain becomes a wild card. And even though Spain doesn't have too many troops, you know, every troop counts in this giant war. So if they joined our side, which is possible, you know, why would they join? What would they get out of it? What could we even offer them? And, you know, vice versa, what would the other side offer? There's a lot of considerations like that. And just, uh, you know, who'd be likely to join on which side and why? And uh, the USA's war, I think, is very risky. Whereas I think the war against the UK for India is a relatively safe war. Uh, in Africa, I'm pretty satisfied with the way things have worked out so far. And I do plan to take this little bit. And uh, I will probably be paying Brazil for it just to avoid an actual war and to make things easier. But um, speaking of money, I don't have any. And this has been a bit of a problem. Basically, there's uh, some massive shortages in the world of certain trade goods, and especially military goods. My military is way behind the UK's, as it turns out, because I don't have battleships. Uh, my supply limit's about half of his, so there's really no point in even having any ships right now. So I'm probably just going to set, I'm probably just going to set my steamer stockpile to zero, and leave it there for most of the next session because, um, you know, if I can't support my navy, if I can't fund it, then there's no point in having it. There's no point in supplying my navy if it's not going to be doing anything. So by setting this to zero rather than the 100 stockpile, which it was during the game, uh, I should be making about 5,000 extra pounds per day if, uh, if single player was any indication. Basically, I should be making a ton of money once I set this to zero. The unfortunate thing about being number one in the world is that I have, I have first dibs on all of the available goods, including the most expensive goods, which happen to be, you know, steamers. So I'll be setting that to zero. I don't need them right now. Uh, I do need artillery, and uh, that has also been costing me quite a bit, but I think the steamers are going to be a lot more expensive. I think the money that I'd save on steamers is going to more than make up for the money that's being sunk into artillery right now. Also, once I save up some money, I'll be able to help my allies a bit. So Scandinavia, Netherlands, Spain, assuming they stay allied. I do have Spain in my sphere right now, so that means they can't technically join a war against me. But if I'm not the one declaring the war, they could potentially join the war. Um, so yeah, that about covers it. Basically, a planned invasion of India to release it, and a wild card invasion of Japan by the USA, uh, which may or may not go anywhere. Both of those wars may or may not happen. Who knows? But we'll see. I think it's going to be interesting regardless. And I think we're going to see the first real world war of the campaign. Anyway, we'll find out during the stream in about six hours. Obviously, this video will be going up during the session, so other people can't snipe me and see what my plans are. But for those of you watching the series on YouTube, obviously you can see this first and, you know, see how things play out. So, thanks for watching, and have a good one.